Okay, so thanks. Thank you all for uh, joining the demonstration. Okay, so if you are not speaking, please uh, turn off your uh, audio. Okay. Yeah. So welcome to the demo session. Okay, so let me introduce myself and about my technical background. Okay, so myself, Jesse Kota, I have around uh, 12 years experience in data analytics space. Uh, worked on uh, uh, Pentaho data integrator and uh, currently working on data stage and IBM information analyzer tools. Okay, so these are IBM InfoSphere information server. Uh, family. So data stage is a ETL tool, uh, data integration tool that, that uh, extract the data from one place to another place by applying uh, transformation rules. Okay, so data stage is a, one of the powerful uh, trans data transformer, data transformations tool. Okay, and uh, I'm also working on uh, IBM information analyzer. It's part of data governance, like uh, it will do the data profiling activity. So for, for example, if you're starting a new project, if you're kicking off a new project in data warehouse, and if you want to check your source data condition, so basically we need to drill down and basically you need to drill down to do the data profiling activity. Okay, so for that purpose, uh, this uh, IBM information analyzer tool will be used. Okay. From 2000, <laughs> November 18 onwards, I'm working as a trainer and our job support consultant uh, for both uh, India student as well as uh, US, UK students. Okay, so this is about me. So now let's move on to demonstration. So here, uh, data stage is a tool uh, we use to build data warehousing applications. So first of all, uh, we need to think why why we need to build data warehousing applications. What is the purpose? Why we are building data warehousing applications? So mainly, these data warehousing applications are built to analyze the business. Okay. So if a company wants to trace out uh, their uh, transaction information or sales information and uh, what is the sales happen uh, yesterday and last week last month last quarter and they will compare the results with uh, previous quarter uh, results to current quarter and uh, normally the it companies they will compare the revenues i mean what is the total revenue they got generated uh, last year uh, last year quarter last year quarter to this quarter. So is there an increase in the business? Uh, they will they will analyze on the uh, customer side as well as the uh, domain domain side in the sense like manufacturing. So manufacturing line, what is the revenue this quarter? And last year, how much revenue we generated? So they will compare uh, last year results to this year results. If the revenue is high, good. So how we can improve further? If the revenue is low, why it is low? What is the reason for uh, the revenue got down? So they will uh, come up with some action plan to improve the revenue. So these kind of analytics they will play by using this uh, data warehousing data. So here uh, we can analyze the business on uh, four factors. Okay, so if you see the diagram here, there are the four factors. One is uh, is our customer. So we can analyze the business based on the customer wise. Okay. So who is our regular customer and uh, I mean the person uh, who's doing more transactions and uh, heavy purchases. So customer wise, uh, they can analyze the business. That is number one and product wise. Okay. So which is a product that is moving faster in our stores? Okay, so which product has low sales volume, which product has high sales volume. So they can uh, analyze the business based on the product wise. And they can analyze the business time wise. So here uh, time wise, we will be calling it as here uh, when. So when we, 
when we, I mean, like uh, time-wise. So when the businesses happen more, like weekdays or weekends, okay, during the festival season. Okay, so day-wise, they can analyze the business. What is my yesterday total transaction amount? What is the total sale amount of yesterday? Okay, and day before yesterday. So they will uh, compare like that. Okay, so and they can uh, analyze the business on week to week to week. Okay, so month to month, quarter to quarter, they will compare like that. And we can analyze the business based on the location wise. Suppose uh, if you take an example of any more supermarkets or more hypermarkets in India. So in, in take an example of city Hyderabad or Bangalore. So they have almost 50 stores, take an example. So in this 50 supermarket stores, so what is, uh, I mean, like which location the business is more? I mean, which location the sales volume is down? So why it is down? What are the reasons for it? Okay. So here, uh, while we, we, while at the billing counter, they will uh, ask your mobile number. Okay. So what on the, with mobile number that has been linked with other card. Okay. So for, uh, for example, if you uh, not went for uh, shopping, I mean, like, uh, uh, due to some restrictions, you are unable to move out from the home and if you're not, uh, you are a regular customer and suddenly you stop for going to more for two months, then you will get a call from uh, more. So what happens, sir? Is everything is okay from your end? And you are not visiting our store for last two months. Okay. So I have experienced this uh, scenario in my life actually. So here, uh, during COVID situation, everything we are ordering in online. Okay. So before that, uh, we used to go to regularly to more to buy our necessary groceries. Okay. So with this uh, data, data racing data, they will uh, analyze the business. To, they will follow up with the customer to improve their uh, sales. Okay. So that is the purpose. Uh, we built uh, this data racing applications. Okay. So any questions so far? So these are the basic fundamental things that we should understand uh, before learning the data stage two. Okay, so any questions? Uh, even the doubt is also silly, also you can ask, okay? Till now, is it clear? You can respond uh, in the chat box, okay? Ajay. Deepthi. Yes, sir, it's clear. Yeah, right, right. Yes, right, right. Okay, good. Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, okay, Ajay. Yeah. So, to build uh, this data everything application, so basically what we need. Okay, so basically what we need, we need to acquire a data, right? So, we need a data to analyze something. Okay, so we need a data. Right. So to build data everything application, we need a process called data acquisition. Okay. So we need data, right? To analyze something to see data everything, nothing but a data storage location. It's like a warehouse. So we have warehouses, right? The different kinds of warehouses. Okay. So uh, Amazon delivery. So they all the products will come uh, to nearest delivery center. All the all the all the uh, the warehouse nearest warehouse delivery warehouse. Similarly, data has a warehouse that is data warehouse. Okay, so to build this uh, data everything application, we need a data acquisition. So what is meant by data acquisition? We need a data to extract. So we are extracting the data. I mean that uh, that means we are reading the data from a file or a database. Okay. So any legacy system, okay? So here in the database, the relational database systems like Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, Sybase, Teradata, okay? So in Infomix, NetEase, so there are the different types of uh, relational database systems. Okay, so there we will be extracting the data, 
Okay, so normally uh, in uh, billing controls, when they scan all your products and that data is stored in somewhere in the database. Okay, so that data we need to extract and apply transformation rules. And we need to load the data into data warehouse with detail and summarized data. Okay, so summarized data that we will load it in a fact tables and the detail level of data that we will load it in a dimension table. So those things we'll see in the data stage training program. Okay, so sometimes we will receive the data from uh, files also. So some business uh, owner, I mean, some companies, they want to share the data. They won't give access to the databases because security issues. So what and all uh, we need, okay, so to load the particular data to a system, so they will send a form of text file. I don't want a third party IT company to, to view all my data or to all my what's happening in my uh, business wise. So they will, they will give only what and all the access needed, that information only they will give access. So rather than giving uh, data in a, they're rather giving connection to database. Okay, so transactional database, they will give access I mean, like they will send the file and that file data, they will be extracting from a database. Okay. So it may be flat file, like delimiter file, fixed width file, XML, COBOL, and all. And another system we can pull the data is legacy, like mainframe system. So mostly these banking applications are uh, built in mainframes. Okay. And, and VASM. These are the legacy system. And sometimes we'll be extracting the data from ERP application like Oracle Labs. Okay. And uh, PeopleSoft, JDST Word. Okay. So here we'll be extracting the data. Okay. So after extraction, so extraction means here we are reading the data. After reading the data, after extracting the data, what will be my next step? I need to transform the data, right? I cannot load the data directly to my warehouse. So there are uh, rules and uh, policies, procedures, governing rules, data governing rules will be there. So I need to follow all these things. Okay, so what I'm doing with my data. So I need to apply required business standard formats. Okay. So here, uh, transaction data is very high, heavy. I mean, the more so, but when we when we want to do uh, some analysis, when you want uh, when you want to analyze the business, so we need only the summarized data. Okay. So if you want to track the history, we need to load the current data as well as the historical data. So there are some rules that needs to be followed while while in the data transformation area. So we'll be merging the data, combining two multiple tables or files, and we'll, we'll apply some cleaning format. We need to clean the data, cleansing, data cleansing. And the next one is data scrubbing. So scrubbing means suppose uh, I'm not receiving data from source, but I need that column in uh, target. So then how we need to achieve this? So we need to derive the column in the transformation layer, and we need to derive the data for it from the existing column in source. Okay. And the next one is data aggregation. So data aggregation is in, in the sense like calculations. Okay. So we'll be covering all the data transformation uh, concepts which are there in data stage in a detail level in the data stage training program. Okay. And we have extracted the data here and we, are, we have applied transformation rules. Then what we need to do? We need to write the data. I mean, we need to load the data into data warehousing system. Okay. So first time when you are building the warehouse, okay, so that uh, load we will, be, will be calling it as a initial load. Okay. So that load we will call it as a initial load. Okay, so here data warehousing tables are empty. So first time we'll be loading uh, the data that we'll call it as full load or initial load. So on the next day, I mean next day, so here uh, based on the business, there will be daily loads, weekly loads, okay, and monthly loads. Sometimes quarterly loads also. Only 
quarterly loads. Okay. Here, uh, normally procurement process, uh, monthly, twice, they will process the data. Banking, banking side, banking application, they will process the data on day-to-day -day transaction. What's happened day-to-day? -day. Okay. So here, initial load, uh, we are first time we are, uh, and, I mean, loading the data into data everything system. And the next day, some, some changes will happen, right? So if you take an example of your bank account, so yesterday my balance was, I have uh, 20K in my account and uh, I need for expenses, I have withdrawn 6,000. So today's my balance is 14K. So there will be a change in the data. So that we will call it as a incremental load. So incremental load that comes in the next day. So with some changes in the data, so if I did not withdraw any, I did not perform any transaction. So the money will be as it is. If, if I perform something, if I purchase something, if you pay through via UPI, okay. So we need to, there is a change in the data wise, right? So that has to be updated in the system. Okay, data version system. Okay, so that we will call it as an incremental load. So incremental load, come up with new data and change data. So new data in the sense like if yesterday I have a few new customers open the bank account. Okay. And change data in the sense already existing customer for uh, some changes happened. Maybe address change. So that also changed, right? So that also we need to update in the system. Okay. So that uh, will come under the incremental load. So no need to worry what is incremental load, what is delta load. So in data science training, uh, in the practical assignments, I will explain you in uh, detail level with examples. Okay. So these are the basic fundamental things that we need to understand what is extraction, what is transformation and what is loading. So just is a detailed overview as a part of uh, data acquisition process. Okay. So any questions here? Santosh, any questions? Ajay, you can type in chat box. Okay, nothing. Good, good. Okay, fine. Yeah. So now let's move on to the next slide. So here, uh, the ETL process come up with this uh, tools to fulfill this data acquisition to build the data averaging application. So here, uh, there are two types of uh, tools that uh, are uh, two types of softwares that are available in the market. One is code-based uh, ETL tools. Another one is uh, geo-based ETL tools. So what are the code-based ETL tools? Code-based ETL tools are, uh, we have Teradata Utilities and SAS. These are the code-based ETL tools. Okay. So geo-based ETL tools are, so Data Stage, Informatica, Abinisho, Oracle Data Integrator. So these are uh, geo-based ETL tools. So, so geo-based uh, ETL tools, there is no coding part here. So you will be it's like a drag and drop technique, like an interface. Okay, so if you want to extract data from file means, from the job palette uh, window, you have to drag and drop the file. And if you want to remove duplicates, drag and drop, uh, remove duplicate stage, then load the data into database. So all things are uh, like uh, geo-based, like an interface. Just you need to make a connectivity between uh, source, transformer, transformer, and the target. Okay. So all uh, these tools will perform the same activity. Okay. So even Pentaho Data Integrator, that is also a geo-based uh, ETL tool. Okay. So just we need to make a connectivity. Suppose I am pulling the data, I want to extract the data from file. So we need to go to the file, we have to provide the location and what type of file it is. It's maybe a fixed width file. So fixed width file, uh, there is no delimiter for it and we'll be reading data in a form of length. So from position wise, we will read the data. Okay. So this is about 
zero based uh, ETL rules. Okay. So this is a basic uh, data warehousing architecture. So here uh, we'll be extracting data from source system and loading into this initial staging area. So this uh, staging area, again, from staging area, we'll be load the data into data warehousing. From data, uh, data warehouse is nothing but a database. So end of the day, we'll load the data into database. That is, we call it as an enterprise data warehouse. From there, uh, the reporting team will come into the picture. So they will extract the data from the warehouse and uh, they will prepare the reports. Okay. So from the reports, uh, this middle level and top level management. Okay. The middle level and top level management, they will make a decision based on viewing the report and they will take a decision. So this is the basic architecture of uh, data workforce. Okay. Yeah, so what is uh, data stage? So data stage is a data integration tool. This initially this product was developed by Essential Corporation almost uh, 32 years back. Okay, so initially when data stage uh, developed, uh, the companies are uh, starting building the warehouses Okay, so day-to-day -day basis, uh, the data data being getting increased. Okay, so even in your, uh, in your smartphone also, day-to-day -day basis, your data is getting increased, like in the form of videos, okay, in form of images. So similarly, in uh, coming to each uh, industry, like manufacturing or retail, banking, so the data is getting increases. So here, Initially, data stage uh, come up with the mainframes and server jobs. Okay, so server uh, jobs has less scalability. So since the data is getting increased day by day, they come up with this uh, parallel processing uh, extent. So parallel. So here in parallel processing, what happens is they will it will diversify the data in the form of nodes. Okay, so these things I will explain you in detail level in data stage trying to after that then they will. Uh, Distributed data again, it, it collect back and load the data into data warehouse. Okay. In 2008, uh, IBM has acquired this product from Essential Corporation and uh, IBM has done uh, many, I mean, added uh, many features to the uh, data stage tool. And currently, the 11.7 version is the latest version that uh, most, of, uh, most of the companies are using. So here 11.7, uh, which helps us to connect to cloud environments like Snowflake DB, Google BigQuery, AWS, Azure. Okay. So it's a data integration tool and uh, it's connects to uh, multiple client clients. So here, these are the client uh, applications like designer. So in designer, all the development activity will be taking place and director director will be mostly uh, like um, director mostly will be uh, like scheduling, running the jobs, monitoring activities, support activity. And administrator, administrator mainly deals with uh, for, uh, creating users, creating projects, all the administration activity. Uh, if a new, new person joins the team and this administrator tool will help us uh, providing the access, all this information. Okay. So this is about uh, data stage. So here, uh, first two classes, let me make a note. So here total 35 hours uh, course duration. Okay. So 10 hours, uh, you have to watch recordings. And remaining 25 hours, 25 hours, 
will be live class. Okay. So in this 10 hours, what and all will be covered? So five hours. If the students are not from uh, computer science background, if they are from non-IT background, so for them, the recorded uh, live sessions. Okay, so these are SQL. So even I don't know anything about uh, SQL and all. Even I'm a beginner, I'm a new to the, uh, new to learn new thing in uh, computer science field. So for them, I have prepared a material that is a SQL study guide. So that will help them uh, to learn SQL faster. So what to do stepwise? So how to create a table, how to insert the data into table, how to update the data in a table. Okay, so all the database concepts. So five hours recorded videos and study guide will be provided for everybody, study guide. For SQL, SQL business. Okay. So in remaining five hours, data stage uh, videos, which are not regularly used in real-time projects. Real-time projects. Okay. So there are a lot many data processing stages. So in this, uh, all we won't use, only few only will be using in the project. So those, in these five hours, uh, uh, what are the concepts that are not covered on the live class that you have to watch the recording just for knowledge sake. Okay, so, and remaining 25 hours, uh, two hours will be data raising concepts. data warehousing concepts. Two hours will be data stage introduction, data stage uh, introduction. Okay, so theory part, data stage theory part. And remaining 21 hours totally practical. Lab session. This will be live. Okay, so we will cover 90 plus assignments in the training program. Okay, 90 plus assignments. So that covers the entire uh, data stage. Okay. So here uh, we, I will provide you software for practice. So below are the system requirements, like uh, IPA processor and above. Eight GB RAM and above. And Windows 10 OS. So these are the system requirements to install a lab session in your personal laptop. Okay, so, and you should have at least 100 GB free space in uh, any drive, like uh, not in C drive, like D, or E, F, whatever it may be. Okay. These are the system require, uh, requirements. Suppose a uh, few of the students, some people, they have i3 processor. So if it is i3 processor, what we need to do? So we need to increase the RAM. RAM you can increase. That is one option. RAM increase. Another option is better to upgrade uh, the system to SSD drive. Hard disk you can uh, upgrade. So it won't cost uh, much actually. So 3000 rupees, they will install Windows 10. Okay, so that will be sufficient. 